Welcome everyone to this weekly live radio show at KCIW 100.7 FM in lovely, warm, coastal Brookings, Oregon. Thank you for tuning into this week's exciting and fun program of Talk and Jerk. I'm Dr. Gigi, and I'm sitting alongside my co-host, San Francisco Jacques. San Francisco, is that how you Hello, Francis? Jacques. Uh, hello, Dr. Gigi, and good afternoon to our guests today and to all of you loyal and, of course, new listeners out there. It's a growing pool of folks that are listening to this great program and to KCIW. Welcome to the Doc and Jacques Radio Variety Show, where we are able to highlight yet another woman in our Ladies, Ladies first. first edition today. Yeah. It is Wednesday, September 18th, 2024. It is, guess what? What? It's National Cheeseburger Day. Yum, yum, yum. You know, that, I might have said yum, yum, yum in the past, but now I say yum. Okay, All right, Janice, but one, I wonder whether the cheeseburgers will be cheaper today. Yeah, they should Better? be, right? Cheaper? They should be. They should Everything, be. Everything, right? should be a dime. Either way, we start our show again with a segment called... MD10. MD10, Tim, and that is where my esteemed colleague and partner, Dr. Gigi, the German born and uh, educated and uh, so it has so many degrees behind her name, I, la- I lost track. Um, what do you got for us today, doc, my dear good doctor? Today we will be discussing some of the three selective cell receptors. Very interesting. Cell receptors. receptors. But before we get to that let's do our little shout out oh yeah let's do a shout out john and patty yeah i hope everything is going well yeah we did too kelly and jimbo janice, janice was that's just right here. janice was Ooh. just here victoria hey victoria vera dr sherry yep. chris and Rebecca. uh did i did i see right. the list oh jared grant and Jaden with vera that's usually connected because mom is yeah is, is dave vera. Holland. dave Clara. Holland. yeah what's up dave lucas, lucas right rika, rika. <laughs> We have uh, Dave Scarlett Darwin. We have, did we already say Anne? Annie and John. Sure, yeah, Annie and my John. my friend in Utah. Yeah, Susie in Utah. That's it. Yeah, name. she's my best in Utah. Okay, we hope mm-hmm. she's listening. John and Patty again, Mama. Sam, Richard, and here's two new ones that just joined in. They're waiting to hear their names said on the air. And that is Casey. How are you, Casey, and your two wonderful children, Lindsay and Tyler? He spells his name T I L E R. Just joking. That's, I think it's T Y. That's okay. Okay. He's 18 you. years old now. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Pleasure. All right. Well, where are we at? So I'm going ahead with my MD10. Oh, yes. Three selected cell receptors. And there's a quick reminder a cell or a receptor, a cell receptor is a structure in or on a cell which can receive a substance causing a change in the activity of the particular cell. So when the substance binds to the receptor, the cell changes something. Okay, it better be good. It, it, be it good. is really cool. It is really cool. It like. sounds like a lot of fun. Let's talk cell receptors today. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go back in time. In 1857... I was born in 1958. Oh, you said 18... 1857. Okay. A scientific talk given by Mr. Claude Bernard started this whole receptor frenzy thing. Uh, frenzy, kind of a fad frenzy? Okay, yeah. keep going. All right. His talk was about curare. Oh, the dart poison from the frog in South America, right? It is the dart poison used by the indigenous peoples in South America during hunting. So the curara paralyzed the prey, and then they could kill the paralyzed yeah, prey. Yeah, and it's a little easily. tiny frog. They're usually really bright colored frogs. And then they're so squeezing. I've seen them in the Amazon. Yeah, they get squeezed for their poison, right? And then they get their tips on them. So over the next hundred, almost 100 years uh, after this finding, it was found that the substances that can bind to certain cells or that can, well, the cells that can receive the substance, what they are, they have found them. They wanted to know what are those substances that can receive those things? Well, they found some and they called this binding site the receptor because they received stuff. Once the substance was bound to the receptor, once again, some changes were observed. In our case, the change was that the muscle couldn't contract anymore. So okay, the so paralysis. they're putting this poison on muscles? Yeah, on isolated muscles, actually. And just watching it, see what it does? Yeah. yeah. So muscle tissue that's from a cadaver, let's say? Can you no, from something alive that still lived a second ago, and then they put that on there, and then it didn't live anymore, and then it couldn't contract well, anymore. Wow, weird. So after they found this, in turn, they started another whole 
lot more research. So in order to find those receptors, the, the research was about those receptors, they were still elusive. They knew something receives this, but they couldn't find it. So then they thought, oh, this is really cool. So we'll throw a lot of poisons on all other so things. So this started too. a worldwide frenzy of let's put poison poisons, on parts like of Poisons, like the curare, right? The curare. animals or whatever. And they put poisons, other substances on oh tissue gosh. to find out what actually happened. And so then once they once that poison or whatever was bound to the cell, they just isolated that binding site. Wow. So one of those substances was nicotine. Oh, okay. Nicotine bound, they couldn't really put Carrara everywhere, So they, but they just threw all kind of poisons on there. They, they threw nicotine on the cells, and then they found out the first receptor, and they called it nicotinic receptor. Okay, I had a chemistry teacher in a fantasy college I went to one time, which I never took a chemistry course in my life, but I remember this professor saying yeah. that a, a thimble of pure nicotine yeah. will kill a horse. Right. Knock it down and put it down. So nicotine so is poison. a poison, yeah. Wow, but we're still inhaling and doing things with it yeah. to this day, right? We don't so know. they found this nicotinic receptor and lo and behold, that's where Curara actually bound to. It bound to one of those nicotinic receptors. So they finally found a thing. They said this is called a nicotinic receptor because nicotine hands bound and, the nicotine. Yeah, cells. and Curara bound that too, but it was already called nicotinic receptor. All right, got it. So then they came up with something else. So later when it was found out that the, the main chemical to that nicotinic receptor was actually acetylcholine, Okay. Which whoever these whoever took a biology words. class knows that this is used for muscle contractions. Is that from acetylcholine, acetylcholine kind of? Uh, acetylcholine. Okay. So they thought, oh, that's really cool. Now we're throwing acetylcholine on everything and see who receives that, right? They wanted to see where all in the body was a nicotinic receptor. So then they found out, well, hello, there are other receptors that can also bind the acetylcholine. And the next one, the next receptor that they isolated was called a muscarinic receptor. Does You're that have saying, to do with the muscar uh, Amanita. Amanita muscaria. Amanita, yeah, uh, so, mushroom yeah. poison. Right. So that was still from the era when they threw poisons on everything. And so they found something that bound the Amanita poison, and they called it muscarinic receptor. Now, when they were throwing acetylcholine on everything... They refound that receptor that actually also bound to acetylcholine, which is part of what we're made up of or not made up of. Okay. Wait a minute. Are there poison. like pear receptors and apple receptors and strawberry receptors or eyeball receptors? You can try to receptors? squeeze an apple on a receptor. Might you be a little too big. We have those built into our body. So we have yeah. all these receptors in there, and some of them are just impartial to, let's say, an apple or to nicotine or to... Okay. Muscarin, I think, I think yeah. So sort of. the muscarinic receptor also received the acetylcholine. So okay. I tell this whole story, actually, to get to my last little tidbit. What's the third receptor? Let's go to the cannabinoid receptor. This is the marijuana one that yes. I first heard about 10 years ago. Then people said, whoa, dude, guess what? The human body has receptors <laughs> only for cannabinoid, so it's natural. Let's, so let's, we have let's, better let's have fun going. right now and because... Yeah. yeah. What was that all about? I so thought... that was still during the time when they threw poisons on everything. And so one of those receptors bound the cannabinoids. So it's only one found of the... in THC or marijuana? No, it's no. found in a lot of... Well, cannabinoids? I guess. Cannabinoids, I thought. Can it was cannab no, cannabinoids. They're alcohols. Oh. Okay. So any, any substance that activates the receptors and gives certain responses like whatever, being at peace or tired or whatever, is now called a cannabinoid. Okay. So note, the naming came first, like the naming of the muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. And after that, they found out what they're really for. So the naming of the cannabinoid receptors was before, that was when it was found for, for binding to the poison and not, oh, wow, we have this receptor that means we would have to do weed all day, for example. That, that's what some Gee, people you mean said. marijuana. Marijuana, yeah. Some of them. So weed. that I had heard called weed in so long. That's that? high school phrase. Well, sorry, yeah, I'm Pot, still in high school. Weed, yeah, all that stuff, yeah. Okay. So that having been said, I thought this fits very nicely in our plant-based show today, right? That's Sam right, weeds and grass. Yet that's another old one. 
right? Right. Because we have something special. Right, right. Well, thank you. I, I kind of understand it, Doc. I sort of kind of get my head around it. Cool. Thank you for uh, clarifying that we have these these receptors for anything and everything, right? A lot of stuff is well, receptors. We might. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not apples. Okay. All right, folks. Thanks again, Doc. Welcome to, I'm going to call this Roots of Wisdom. Okay. Today, oh. where we will dig into the <laughs> fertile soil of gardening and unearth the truths that bloom in our very backyards. Today on the Doc and Jacques Radio Variety Show, we're joined by Sharon Johnson. She is president of the Brookings Harbor Garden Club. Gardens, like life itself, are, think about it, there are tapestry of beginnings and endings of patience and surprise. And from that first big garden, what was it called? Uh, oh, the Garden of Eden. Yeah. To the victory gardens of wartime. These patches of cultivated earth have been, well, they've been our companions throughout history, offering sustenance, beauty, and solace. Yeah. Today, as we chat with Sharon Johnson, consider this. A garden is a mirror reflecting the care we give to the world around us. It's a teacher. It shows us that growth often happens unseen, just beneath the surface. It's also the closest thing we have to a time machine, one that connects us to the rhythms of the seasons and the cycles of life itself. So, whether you're tending a sprawling landscape or nurturing a single potted plant on a windowsill, listen up closely. For in the whisper of leaves and the quiet push of roots spreading through soil, there are lessons waiting to be learned and joys ready to unfurl. Get ready to cultivate your curiosity and let your imagination flourish, flourish for it is time to discover how a simple seed can sprout into a revolution of the spirit. Welcome to the wonderful world of gardening. And Sharon Johnson, welcome to the Doc and Jacques Radio Variety Show. Well, thank you very right. much. I have to tell you that what you just read covers a lot of the things I already wrote down. You wow. have encapsulated why there are so many of us out there that garden. Cool. Wow. So this yeah. this this conversation is now over. Then we cover it all. <laughs> so I can go home now. We are <laughs> done. Covered really nice phones. meeting you. Hey, yeah. bring some more Brussels okay. sprouts. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. All right, Doc. Lead off with some of the questions. Okay, let's come back back in here. Come on, sit down. All right, Sharon. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Now let's start with the basics. Where were you from? Where were you born? Where did you grow up? And what got you here? Okay, great. I consider myself an Oregonian. Mm -hmm. I was born in Corvallis, Oregon. My father was a professor of agriculture oh, cool. and was very involved in the extension program at Oregon State. Oh. So I was there until five and we moved to Washington State where he was also involved in egg extension. So um, I've wandered back to my Oregon roots um, I've been here a little over, well, not quite two years. Wow. And there are probably three things that brought me specifically to Brookings. Yes. Uh, the ocean, mm -hmm. the climate yeah. in Brookings specific compared to the rest Amen. of the Oregon coast. Get you. This is a little microclimate that's just fantastic. Yes. And um, my husband and I wandered through here about nine years ago and spent about a week. And I found the Manly Arts Center mm -hmm. and I found the Azalea Park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I found the Botanical Garden and the Garden Club. And that kind of clinched it for me that this, this was the place. Yeah. So it took us that long to get here, but... <laughs> We're really pleased to be Two here. years, welcome. Uh, how long have you been here in this area? Four years? I've been here almost four years. Oh, Three and a half, a little more. Four years. Mm -hmm. So we're all kind of newbies in that sense, but there yeah. is something magical about this. What you just said about- Yeah, there really We is. came here nine, month, nine years ago, and now we come back again because we always, we were bitten by this place in a, in a yeah. good way. Very cool. Nice. Cool. cool. 
Now, what do you like best, the ocean and what you just said, or is there anything else that you like best here or not at all? Oh, that's a really tough question. Yeah. I was thinking about that. <laughs> you know, I only, I'm only i only a five-minute walk away from the beach where uh -huh. we live, so that's part of my morning ritual. Nice. Uh, but the first year I was here, I was just excited every month because I moved here from a high desert plateau with a lot of winter <laughs> and the things that are considered annuals where I came from uh -huh. grow here all, all year, year round. round. Right. And I would be going out into my yard and picking flowers in November, you know, and, yeah. gen and going, oh, I, I was just so stoked. So uh, the vegetation here is just incredible. I have learned that gardening here uh, you're you're beating back the bushes as opposed to coaxing things to grow. You know, there's this kind of primordial kind of presence about this area that I I'm crazy about. You know, you said the, the all the flowers and things up in Carpenterville Road. You know where that big uh, the the mill is out on Carpenterville yeah. on 101. There's an old dilapidated sign there. It says as you drive into Brookings from the north heading south. It says. Brookings, home of the winter blossom, uh, winter flowers, winter blossoms, or no, oh, no, I can't think of it. <laughs> anyway, it, we, get, we get the gist. Yeah, right? I mean, it's winter flowers. I thought, oh, wow, what are winter flowers all about? That is cool. It is a unique area. Have you always been a gardener? Uh, yes. My grandmother, my maternal grandmother, and my mother were both gardeners. So I started out as the kid that went behind to pick up the weeds that had been pulled, um, you know, all of those chores. Mm. And um, from there, when I finally moved out on my own, um, it was just kind of the natural thing to do. My whole life had always been focused about plants and um they both of them had very large formal English rock gardens. Oh, cool. So that's yeah. what did you do other than that? I mean, other than always having gardening, but what did you do in your life? What have you done? Um, I have an art degree and uh, and teaching degree, so mm -hmm. high school art. Um, and then I, I, for career, I ended up realizing that I was not any better at being a teacher than I was a student, <laughs> that um, fitting myself into the rules, uh, that kind of thing, di just didn't quite suit my personality. So I ended up um, in retail, of all things, okay. uh, started right. out as a visual person and making things beautiful. And that's really my focus, no matter whether I'm planting flowers or uh, setting a table or doing my thing in a store. It's Presentation. Just, yeah. Presentation. Life, yeah. life, everyday life should be beautiful. Well, I agree. Now, you've only been here for less than two years. How do you come from moving here to being the president of the Garden Club? How, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, so I retired and I was now able to fill my time with my choices. Yeah. And we got here in December, uh, two, almost two years ago. In February, I decided just to walk in cold <laughs> on a Brooking Harbor Garden Club monthly meeting. Oh, cool. And I just walked in and introduced myself and they made me feel so welcome and I sat down and I haven't left them yet. <laughs> and, <right>. um, <laughs> wow. Where do they nice. meet? Where does the Garden Club meet? Well, you know, uh, wherever. We have a couple of places. We, we meet every month and have some kind of program. Usually we rent one of the rooms at the library okay. and flyers will go out because we love the public to come and join us. But we will rent uh, event centers at some of the community 
parks, you know, the sure. RV parks or whatever. They have those great uh, right. centers. Oh, outside of Brookings, too. Yeah. And sometimes at the uh, churches will let us uh-huh. rent their spaces. So it varies from okay, month cool. to month. Cool. Okay. Now tell us broadly, what kind of different gardens are out there? Yeah. So you have the, you said the, I, I think you said the English garden type rock thing. garden, English rock, rock garden. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's so many different styles mm-hmm. that you can do in terms of gardening, um, that kind of suit your personality. Yeah. You know, English cottage garden gardens can be very riotous with color, and they're this wonderful wild kind of thing that's in a contained border. What is but, that called? The what kind of garden? An English, English cottage like Kelly, garden. Kelly, Kelly. Oh, Kelly that's Kelly. It, yeah. my, my name's uh-huh. Kelly. Who's listening? Hey, Kelly. Yeah, as opposed to an English formal garden with lots of um, little bushes, structures short, that are, yeah. and the yes, they're very trimmed and that sort of thing. Um, you know, Japanese gardens, the Portland Garden in uh, the Japanese Garden in Portland is just exquisite. Yes. Um, I know that. And. Those two have totally different feels. Right. Um, you know, I just got back from a trip and went to the main coastal botanical garden because I wanted to compare what they were doing there. You're talking about the, the East Coast, yes, Maine? Yes, Maine. Okay, across the, the state country. of Maine. All right. And um, as far away from here as you can be. Yeah. And I just lost my train of thought. Oh, about oh I know. But it was really nice to see the way that they incorporated many of the same things we have here. The driftwood, which is a natural kind of part of our environment, sure. Yeah. Sure. And the same kind of trees. And um, their approach was very similar to the way we, we do it here, um, with a big focus on not just the plants, but the bugs and the bees and the butterflies oh, wow. and the and the animals. Interesting. The, you know, the birds. And we have a deer down in the botanical garden that, uh, depending on the time of day when you go out, he's there to greet you, you know, which is just fantastic. Right here, down at the yeah. bottom of the hill at the end of the bridge, on yeah. the Brookings side of the well, bridge. Well, you know, many of us just have them in our back backyards. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you just have to replant every day after he visits. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there are native plants that you can plant that are deer resistant. Yeah. There are a couple of great products that you can use that will not harm small children, dogs, cats, and that sort of thing. So. Now, the gardening, that the, the, the garden club garden that is here, do you water it or is it is it really like native plants that don't need extra watering? It's a little of both. Good question. The garden specifically is native plants. Yeah. And we have separate areas. We have kind of a sand dune area and the mm-hmm. plants that are indigenous to that area. We have... <laughs> That's okay. We got somebody moving a furniture up there chopping oh, chicken in okay. the <laughs> restaurant above All right. Okay. I just wanted to make it's sure happened. that it wasn't me. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have... Um, and so... We do have sprinkler system, Mm -hmm. an irrigation system, because as you know, uh, our climate everywhere across the country is in flux, and we never know exactly when we might need a little extra water. But we try really hard to um, garden along with Mother Nature. Cool. So. Um, we do a little of both. You have there's seasonal gardens. I mean, there's winter gardens. There's herb gardens, herb gardens. and then there's the food gardens. I mean, I think when I that's think what of we garden, have I the food garden. Food, yeah, I wasn't interested in gardening until I planted a few seeds, and then it started growing on me. Was <laughs> already <laughs> 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 well, but no, until I met uh, uh, Dr. Gigi here, she was an ardent gardener. Incredible. You have what raised bed gardens? That's yeah, I have to, my water. My my dirt is. Is uh, sand only. So yeah. I have raised gardens and then I fill them up with real dirt. But we, it's mainly a food garden, except yeah. you love your daisies, you love your, oh, your certain uh, yeah. plants, and then there's uh, the herbs, uh, the coleander, yep, and the herbs and, coliander, and veggies, and the chives. And yeah, and I haven't, you know, I didn't even mention those, but obviously that's really important. And there are the 
<clears throat> excuse me, the master gardeners uh, in this area. Yeah. Are there master gardeners? Or oh, they? yes. Wow. And, you know, there was a point where you ask about what other clubs we interact with and stuff. And I kind of made a list of all of the people in this area, not just the Brookings Harbor Garden Club, that love the earth and take care of it. And the master gardeners are one of them. And, you know, they have had a gardening program with the local schools here for a long time nice. and work with the kids uh, planting vegetables and that sort of thing. And um, they just broke ground in Gold Beach for an educational center there that adults and and the community can yeah. go in to learn about those yeah. sorts of things. I'm surprised in Crescent City they have several community gardens, and it's so cute. Yeah, because they are. Yeah. are there. Also in yeah. churches, I've seen yeah, them the at the church churches, and, and then at the uh, United Indian Health Services. That, they have that, that too. Yeah, they have a garden up there. So, yeah, it's yeah. very nice. Now, what are the yeah. secrets to becoming a good gardener? Yeah, well, give us some hot secrets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's, yeah. That, what's a big me. secret? If somebody came to you and said, what's your secret for becoming being such a good gardener. And I have, I couldn't think of one secret. <laughs> oh, um, see, okay. Don't one tell. Of the, don't tell. One don't of tell. the things that you mentioned in the beginning there was um, patience and, and learning to be part of the cycle. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to enjoy the process unless you're going to go out and buy a 50-foot tree and plant yeah. it. it. It The joy of watching that plant grow. It, yeah. you, know. you know, in the beginning, I had potatoes. We still have potatoes. And and I went to harvest them and dig them out of the garden. And he said, man, that is, Jack here said, that is so much work. And then we have to dig them out. And then you have to water them. And then you have to wash them. You could just go buy them for $2.99. And you get 10 times as much. 99 cents. A okay. Yeah. So, but, and then... My that's what I said. I said it's not about the money saving. It probably doesn't save any money. It's the joy of growing, and and now he's bitten by the joy totally. bug, and he goes out and gets beans and peas and yeah, potato. Oh, I had a potato. I found another potato. Cooking with a fresh ingredient. <laughs> yeah, oh, so it so tastes fun. better. Yeah, yeah. it's so fun. better. Oh, right. You so know fun. how it's been raised. Yes, right. chemicals or no chemicals, Zero chemicals all that stuff. Yeah. That exactly. So, yeah. Uh, so absolutely amazing. Uh, what does it take to be okay? So if there's no big secrets. What does it take? So you said patience is maybe one of them, right? Yeah. It's a live and learn kind of a process too, unless you have a good mentor or somebody that you could walk, walk in, like Janice, for instance. So Janice was here. Hello, Janice, if you're listening. Her backyard. You know, you've seen. Have you been to her backyard? Have you I have her? not. Okay. Yet. She's got a great garden. I, I well, she did it a couple of years ago when I last saw it. And, and she could walk you through and say, this does so well here, and look at this. So I would think that as you go around traveling in this cultural area, which is different than, let's say, inland, where it's hot, um, you could learn a lot from that, I would think. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot is really when somebody explains. So my neighbor helped me a lot, saying, well, water here, water there, don't do this, um, let him climb up this way or whatever. So, yeah, when somebody tells you something, and that's, for me, I can... I can retain much more, and yeah. it's always nice to read about something, but for me, it works best that, when I That's one told. of the pleasures or joys that I've had being part of the Garden Club community. Um, I learned just working alongside my mother yeah. and my grandmother, mm -hmm. but the plants where I grew up were totally different yeah. than here. So... Some of my general knowledge is useful, but the women that I interact with on a daily basis have years of firsthand knowledge yeah. and um, what does well and what yeah. struggles and yeah, yeah and and so I can tap their energy all the time. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna tap this right here real quick, just because we are already at that midway, halfway point of this show. Uh, you are tuned in to KCIW 100.7 FM in Brookings, Oregon. We're proudly a non-commercial Yahoo. We are a community radio station. And regardless if you sing, you have a voice, and that's what KCIW does the best. I implore you, get involved with our local community, your local community radio station. We did, Doc and I, and we have never looked back. It's a great family. It's a great radio family, great, interesting people. 
And uh, we'd love to have you come in and see what we do and become a contributing uh, member of our family. You can donate your time and money to an exemplary local nonprofit radio station like KCIW. You can find out more by going to kciw.org. And this show, by the way, will be downloaded and will be on the KCIW uh, website, website right after this is this, this transpires. So you could come back and listen to this again and find out some information, more information about our guest. Back to Sharon Johnson. Okay. What do you got? What's the next question? Yeah, what's what? Tell us what the Garden Club is all about. Wonderful. So the Garden Club um, is all about stewardship of the earth. Yeah. And our focus is through education um, and let me get it. I want to get it exactly right. So let me read it here to you. The, the vision? The, the or vision. The, yeah. yeah, the vision statement mm-hmm. here. Vision mission. Good. Uh, if I can find the right page here. Um, we like the. Oh, here we go. There we go. Thank you for your patience, everyone out there. <laughs> Remember, you'd she's a gardener. Great, you need make great patience. Gardeners. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're dedicated to being good stewards of the earth through education, as I mentioned, uh, conservation, and then beautification. Um, and so we try to do that not only with the hands on things that we do at the botanical garden, um, but like I said, we have educational programs every month where we try to have topics of interest to the general public, um, composting, uh, native plants that would work in your yard depending on how much moisture you get, if mm-hmm. it's a bog, if it's dry, uh, Some, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we're here to help with that. We are um, very interested in working with the community. That's another thing about living here that I found to be wonderful is the interaction in the small community about how everyone supports each other. So um, we've just established a scholarship program, which cool. we will be instituting in the high school, you know, to for any student that wants to pursue their college education or education past high school in any kind of area of conservation or ecology, anything like that. Um, We are in the process of trying to develop more family focused activities Mm -hmm. uh, to get things that we can offer to the community at large. Yeah. so, so, so there's some the, of the things. The monthly do. meetings that you were talking about is that's those are the community focused monthly meetings, or was mm-hmm. it the board monthly meetings? No, no, no. Those yeah. are all uh, programs. You know, uh, later on I'll share with you where you can get a hold of us if you okay. want to participate and come to our our meetings. We we. Uh, is it a have, board of? Do you have a board? Is it a five hundred one c three? We are a five hundred one. Uh, C3. Okay. We, we're incorporated. Yeah. Um, Great. The but, Garden Club started in like 1946. Mm. You mentioned, uh, and they were called the Azalea uh, Garden Club. Club then. Okay. Um, and it started as a direct response to the need for victory gardens. You mentioned oh, that. Yeah. Victory yeah. garden, yeah. Okay. Wartime victory yeah, garden. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, they've reinvented themselves over the years in terms of what um, the needs of the community have been. In the early 70s, a group of the people from the original club got together and decided, you know, oh, dot. Uh, Oregon Department of Transportation <laughs> yep. had this little way station down on the corner where the botanical garden right. is now. And they put their heads together and said, well, let's garden this little space and beautify it. And it kept going from there. And we have eventually uh, had an agreement with ODOT where we've kind of leased that land. We take care of it. They started digging up all the asphalt and turned it into what it is now. Very nice. Yeah. Such a nice entrance to Brookings. Thank you. I I just, um, I stop and think about the history of that garden. We have photographs of when it was just 
concrete and asphalt and what all of the hard work and yeah has gone into that and made it what it is today is just right amazing on. you know so, so how do you collect money for such a scholarship quickly i'm, I'm digressing yeah no that's important we have um events in fact we have one coming up soon that i hope to share with and you what is that share away oh share. do it <laughs> share away share up. Okay. Share, share, share. so october 12th we have two plant sales a year one of them is during azalea festival Okay. And um, that was a great event. And we always do one in October. So this year, we decided to kind of expand it a little bit. Uh, we still have the fantastic plant sale, which um, not only do we have great plants that we have available, but you have all the advice and expertise you would ever need. But we've added a master gardener's information table. They will be there to answer questions, bring your sick plants, do whatever. Oh, cool. They will have uh, children's activities there nice. to educate them. The Xerces Society, the local society. Xerces? Yeah, and Xerces is all about the good bugs and the good pollinators. And um, it's wonderful. We've put a bee house in our pollinator garden, which we hope by next spring will be an official monarch butterfly way station. Wow. You know, there is a group here in town, the Brookings <laughs> Oregon Monarch Butterfly <laughs> Association. Wow. Cool. So we've we've tried to partner with them. We've already started putting in the milkweed, that sort of thing. So we'll have Xerxes. We'll have the Master Gardeners, the uh, Butterfly People. Yeah, Xerxes? hopefully. How do you spell I, that backwards? And, oh. X-E-R-C-E-S. There we go. Oh, so for Zer those Zer 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 Yeah, so for those of you that mm -hmm. are interested, you should go and uh So the plant sale on October 12th is happening where? Where does the plant sale It'll be at the Botanical Garden from right 11 to 4. Cool. Um, we will have children's activities. We're painting pumpkins. We'll have a photo booth with a scarecrow. Wow. So... So we're we'll talking about have, the botanical, the one down by the, yes, uh, the highway. Yes, it's not on, up on 101 and North yep. Ketco uh, River, River Road. Road. Yeah, cool. And um, so we also have some product that we will sell. So we raise all of those funds, and they help uh, keep the garden going. They help with our scholarship fund, um, all of those things. And the, right on. we'll have a wonderful raffle for a beautiful succulent plant container. We have a lot of community people that have um, helped. We're going to have a couple musicians. We'll have a stage set up. Cool. Harmony and Me, which is yeah. a wonderful yeah, we organization. Know Trisha. Trisha Iverson, yeah. She's been on this show. She's <laughs> going to be there with her um, focus and Right She's on. going to be teaching kids how to make rain sticks. So cool. cool. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. So, so so how can someone become a member to be part of not only the festival, yeah. but part of this whole thing? That'd be wonderful. So every Tuesday morning, volunteers gather at the Botanical Garden, and we put in a couple hours of good work. What we time do you start? show up at 9.30. 9.30 in the morning at the Botanical Garden. Yeah. And um, you can come down and introduce yourself. You can also go to our website, which is uh, BH Garden Club. Okay, BH standing for Brookings Harbor. Brookings Harbor. Okay. Not better homes and garden. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, BH Garden Club. Dot org. All right. We Some also have a Facebook it. page, which is um, Brookings Dash. Harbor Garden Club. Okay. You can contact use the contact us uh, space on the garden on the website. Okay. And we'll get back to you. Um, you can show up at any of our general membership meetings if you see one of our flyers, which we plaster all over <laughs> town. Okay. And um, introduce yourself there. Um, it's free membership. Uh huh. Yeah. There are no dues. Mm -hmm. We. We um, raise one of the other ways that we interact with the community is that the uh, we take care of the formal gardens at the Azalea Park. Sure. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. we work with the city of Brookings. Oh, cool. 
and they've been um, great partners with us. Yes, that, yeah. that's marvelous. So there are statues so. in there, sta- like plastic statues, like people with a rain with an umbrella. Who who puts those in, in so those formal gardens? Some of the artistic sculptures. Yeah, just the sculptures. Oh. Yeah, we walked through there. Yeah, it, that is nice, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, I honestly don't know. They were already that there. is, yeah, that isn't something that we've done. Okay. But now that you mentioned that, w- one of the things that I, I'm interested in, personally, <laughs> because of my art background, yeah. is public art. Mm-hmm. Cool. And um, the the work that's in the Azalea Park is wonderful. The sculpture at Chetco Point, sure, yeah. um, all of those sorts of things, and um, so when we're developing ideas for the botanical garden, we not only want it to be a place where gardeners can come, but anybody can come just to find some peace, solace, some solace, yeah. and there are other ways you can do that, and one of them is through art. So, you know, that's something we're considering, just thinking about. And if that's the case, what would it be? I know that there are people in the community that are also interested in that. So um, that's kind of an exciting thing. I'll tell everybody to go out Tuesday mornings at 930 to the Botanical Garden right there at North Chetco River Road and 101, right as you cross over the bridge, right at the base of the hill that uh, Zalia Park sits upon. And you can meet up with other fellow gardeners and new people, and just like yourself, that are coming out, and some experienced people. And you can get together and find out more about the the um, the garden club then. And then B, as in boy, H, as in Harry, gardenclub.org is your website. You can also be on Facebook. So, And it's free membership. It's plus, plus, plus. It's win, how, win, win. How I'm many members it. do you have right now? Um, you know, we have probably about 75 right now. Nice. Yeah, which is a nice sized right. group, um, and we are always uh, opening our arms to as many people that are interested. And there's so many other ways you can participate too, besides digging in the dirt. So I want to point that out to anybody that's listening. If you just love plants, but you can't because your back won't let you dig. Don't worry about it. There are so many other ways that you can participate in our mission, our education, our conservation. And we love having new ideas, fresh energy. Um, So don't think that you're restricted in how you participate. Wow. So come into that Tuesday morning. I, I would think that's a great way introduction, and then they can maybe come to a board or a board of meeting, a board of directors meeting at a later point and find out more from the people that are there. What's happening? Uh, there is no. I've never seen a, a Sasquatch or what's this Bigfoot around here, but I did see the Hulk down at the at the Azalea Botanical Garden because he has a green thumb. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're mistaking him with the Jolly Green Giant. No, oh, but, you the know, Jolly I'll Green let, Giant. I'll let that go. I'll oh, let that go. you taught me on so that one. So tell me about all the travels you do to see other gardens. You just got back to from the one in Portland. Do you? Yeah, we we. Um, I am just now actually getting started seeing a lot of the gardens that are around here. Um, so I personally have not seen a lot of them. Um, I've been told. You're still young, so. Yes, <laughs> I am. Actually, I have plenty of time. But this last trip that my husband and I took, we... What's your husband's name? Bruce. Hey, hey Bruce. Bruce. Shout out to Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he's very handy because he's a photographer. So right, now cool. I can have him take photographs of all of these things for me. Cool. The um, We went to Niagara Falls, and the formal gardens there, of course, are exquisite. We went to... Um, uh, almost any university town's going to have a garden. Yeah. It's amazing. And I, is it Ocean Shores hmm. that is north of here? You guys can phone in later and and let them know which one it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but they're the ones that compete with us during the um, Christmas lights. Oh, yeah. You know, and I guess they have a spectacular. That's a natural. So Christmas lights, which uses the park completely. Now, what happens the then? Park. So park. So get... we don't garden up there okay. from November when they get the lights put up yeah. uh, until 
uh, the lights come down. Who's our gal January. that runs the uh, watch? Darn it, I forgot. But yeah, we've had the guest. Uh, okay, and I think that's in transition right now too. Is so, it? Yeah. Okay. Be the, calling. Yeah, is it Kim Devine? Was it? Uh, no, I think it's. Oh, okay, it doesn't matter. But people can get involved <laughs> with your garden club real simply, and it's free. And you're looking for anybody and everybody. You don't have to be an avid gardener, or you just have to have uh, it's just some sort of a community the spirit. Some. And we like that. They like that. Yeah. Hey, and by yeah. the way, you should come down and use our Wednesdays. We have uh, anybody could come in to uh, case CIW here around 2 o'clock, and you could record PSAs or public service announcements. And because of the uh, the Garden Club being a 501c3, good foundation, and helpful, we'd love to promote it here or there. Oh, that's fantastic. Let's Thank you. That. We Thank may take that. you up on that. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your favorite garden out there? What's Anywhere? your favorite garden in the whole wide world? Wow. Can't oh, be your my backyard. goodness. Buf- Bucart? <gasps> Buf- Buchart. Oh, the Buchart Gardens? Buchart, yeah. yeah they're beautiful. And I have been there. I went I to school to, yeah. Uh, in British Columbia. Okay, so. how about Meinau Gardens? Let's. Where is the place? Mine's in Germany. Mine's lower Bucard. Yes, Germany. Okay, yeah. Bu- uh, uh, yeah. Bucard is up here, Banff. Uh, I mean, uh, in British Columbia, yeah. Well, now that I've been to the botanical gardens in the state of Maine, right now that's my current favorite. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. <laughs> and one of the reasons is uh, Thomas Dambo, who is, uh, I think he's a Danish artist has built those huge trolls and he's putting them all across the world. Oh, the, the ones world. with the hats coming down? They're all different. Oh. But, but he, wherever he goes, he brings the community in, nice. which I love the idea, and yeah. they use recycled product oh, cool. and they build these things. Hey, where, anyway. where, do you buy, where do you buy your garden tools or potty here locally? Yes, do you good, have... good question. You know... Um, Unfortunately, we've lost our local nurseries this year, Flora Pacifica and Troy's. However, yeah, Troy yeah. he was on last week. But yeah, he's he's they were great partners. Um, Del Kerr Grange co- okay. Co-op is yep. wonderful. They've partnered with us, and as members, they really work with us. And um, that's one of the perks of being a member is that there are a number of community. Uh, businesses that will give us discounts. Cool. So, so that's like um, garden tools, potting material, fertilizers, and yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Carried. Okay. Gold Beach Lumber and Cascade. Never thought of Gold Beach Lumber. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, some things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, so. they have great tools. How about and, seeds? You buy your seeds online? Um. No, but there are a lot of people that propagate. I just uh, want somebody else to propagate it. Right. For me. There we go. So. Gotcha. Yeah. So I honestly can't give you a good seed yeah. uh, um, place. I like but. to buy the seedlings already growing, right? You just put them in the ground. That's what yeah, I but like. like. It's so easy. A hundred times more expensive. Yeah. Yeah, and and you miss out the the uh, watching them pop up in your little Dixie cup. Yeah, like it is kind of school, cute, except for wonderful. then you put them by the window and water them and spray them, and okay. then they get all long and gangly well, and, and I over. forget. I so. love our, our, our basil. Did you notice our basil in the garden? It no. took off. Oh, it's massive now. It's huge. Oh. It's like taking over the garden. I love it. I love basil. Yeah, but it. to your point, there are also, um, you know, Fred Meyer and Bymart have great plants. Right. Dragonfly Nursery has been a great partner for us up near Bandon. I Dragonfly Nursery, what a great name. Yeah, and Stillwater Native uh, Nursery, which is also up that direction. They partner with us, um, and they they have great plants. So um, those are places you can go. Cool. And even Freddy's has that little outdoor area. Yeah, yeah they really do. Convenient. And right. you know, the master gardeners every spring that partner with Freddy's, and they have a fuchsia day. And you Look go cool. down and buy I've little seen some starts. huge fuchsias. Oh my! Gosh. And the ma- master gardeners wow. will plant it for you. Nice. And they they uh, donate the soil, wow. so that's kind of a fun little thing, um, you know. And you can do that. So yeah, there. Are, I think those are most of the places we've worked with here in the community. Okay, uh, our area is unique, as you know. It's coastal. Yes. Uh, it is different from a lot of areas inland. It is colder here. It rains a lot, right? It's foggy. Uh, do these 
conditions, you just got to know what to plant, right? You just have to know it by trial and error or talking to master gardeners or other fellow gardeners, what has worked in the past for them and what hasn't. Absolutely. And that's, I think, the main focus of our botanical garden, of course, is on native plants to show you what is beautiful and hardy that will grow here. You know, the native azaleas in this area, yeah. you know, are just amazing. And there are lots of but, succulents here, too, which a lot of people think they're desert plants, no, they, right? And yes, and I did. So <laughs> I told you about this February meeting when I first got yeah. here, and I walked in, and uh -huh. they have you introduce yourself. And the, one of the first things I said to this group of people I'd never met before is, and what's the deal with the succulents here? <laughs> it was like brand new news to me. And now I'm, of course, hooked. Yeah. Yeah. We take walks all the time out near the sand dunes and whatnot, and we see them growing out in these little little pockets of dirt minute. Yeah. But they are succulents nevertheless. Where do you see yourself, Don? Where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself? Me? Can, yeah. No, we're talking about I know. Share. A few hours. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in two to five years? And what... What uh, are you aspiring to? Well, um, my yard will actually be beautiful. In two to five years? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it takes that long. And, and we moved into a fixer-upper, mm. and we've been working on the inside. My husband and I do that together ourselves. All the time. So fun. we've been knocking holes in walls and all that sort of thing. So we're now at the point where I can start moving outside. And um, so I will have... Right for the winter. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I will have a garden in at my house that I can sit yeah. in. Do you, do you have a greenhouse? I do not. Mm -hmm. You need one. And I will... Uh, Jolly giant. I have, I, have, green giant lives. I have lots of friends with greenhouses. So. <laughs> I like greenhouses. are romantic and unique and, and nostalgic. I think they're totally... Yeah, they are. Ones. They are. Okay. We ask all our guests this. What is your tombstone going to say, Sharon Johnson? That I saw that question, I thought, oh my goodness. So um, I had to think about it. You know, 30 years ago, I think I sat down and I did this little exercise to help me kind of focus on what my mission or my purpose in life was. Yeah. And I identified that joy and beauty were two things that kind of went together and encapsulated what I wanted, how I wanted to be. So I've cool. been striving for it. I haven't achieved it yet, but I guess I would want it to say she created joy and beauty. Oh, that's that sweet. is cool. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, you've been, we've been talking with Sharon Johnson, who is the president of the Brookings Harbor Garden Club the past uh, 45 minutes or so here, and we have thoroughly enjoyed it. I want to reiterate uh, once again, I think, I just heard about this, every Tuesday morning at 9.30 in the morning, the Botanical Garden right there at the base of the of the Azalea Park and at on 101 is uh, the little garden there. At 9.30 in the morning, they meet. A bunch of gardeners meet, and you, to, what, tend the garden there? That's, and just yes, sure and I can tell you we always have great cookies afterwards. Cookies, okay. You can bring along a thermos of afterwards, coffee or whatever then. you want. <laughs> Show up there. I think that's a grand way to, to get it exposed on Tuesday mornings at 9.30. Is that rain or shine, or if it's really pouring, you're not going to? If it's really pouring, we don't go. Okay, I gotcha. Or you can find them on BH Boy Harry bhgardenclub.org or b uh, uh, brookings harbor gardening on Facebook. Free membership sounds like a great deal. Great mentoring and lots of people there to meet if you have any interest whatsoever or just an interest in volunteering and hanging out with cool gardeners, right? Is this is the place to be. Absolutely. We're cool. We want to have a checkup with you about every six months because. I think it's an in, in, integral part of our community. A uh, garden is a great way to, to go, and uh, we'd love to talk with you more about this. So congratulations for you being the president. We didn't yeah, find out very how. Yeah, cool. Um, Thank um, you. First Thank lady, you. yes. Yeah, for first ladies. I, I just want to put in one more plug, yeah, too. Yeah, plug away. Please do. Please come down and see us October 12th. Ah, the October Harvest 12th, Festival. yes. It's going to be so much fun, and it's going to be family-focused and very 
And that's going to be Education. at the Botanical Garden? Yes, too. So absolutely. October 12th, folks, it's not too far away. It's happening at the Botanical Garden. That's our annual plant sale. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Sharon Johnson. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And, Doc, where are we going to shift to now? We're going to Fun, fun time, time Corner. Corner. Oh, boy. Okay, now feel free to <laughs> laugh along here. Um, I will, uh, I- I've got some good jokes, but let you start with a quote, Doc. Okay, my first quote is, to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. I love that one. To plant a garden is to believe in gar- uh, in tomorrow? In tomorrow, Audrey Hepburn. By Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, oh such a nice God. quote. That's Give a us another one. one. Yeah, right. It's a little on the serious side. Gardening is art that uses plants as paint and soil and sky as canvas. Gardening is an art that you should play. That could come that is your so mouth, cool. right? All right, yeah. Yep. Uh, hey, give a weed an inch, and it'll take a yard. <laughs> that one is so cute. Hey, what vegetable did Noah not want to bring up his le- on his ark? <laughs> uh, hey, I almost blew. What vegetable did Noah not want to bring on his ark? Uh, Leeks. Cute. So bad. Okay. <laughs> Hit us with another one, Doug. Show me your garden, and I will show you who you are. Alfred Austin. I love that one. Show me your garden, and I will show you who you are. I mean, that is those are reflective. Doc, you look absolutely radishing today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> hey, eat, drink, and be rosemary. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mine, I'm going to go to hold up and see great things in a seed, that is genius. Yes, to hold up and see great things in a seed, that is genius by Lao Tzu. Mm-hmm. Lao Tzu. Yeah. That is a good one. Um, okay, this radio broadcast is being heard all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy has a speech impediment. Um, my garden is my most beautiful masterpiece. That Claude is Monet. my Claude Monet, yeah. right? My garden is my most beautiful. He was the greatest pl- prolific artist in the world, and he said his garden is the most yeah, beautiful. He was his most, Mr. That yeah. is a great one. Uh, what is small, red, and whispers? A horse, radish. <laughs> I can't talk to it. It's radish. <laughs> Didn't get that first. Madame, I one. beg your garden. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm letting you on the ground floor of my jokes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay. No. I was still laughing at the horse okay. whisper. The horse whisper. It's a small red and whisper. A weed is but an unloved flower. A weed is but Ooh. I love that one. A weed is but an unloved flower. So wow, cute. wow, wow. Shut your eyes and dream and a dream of go- no. Shut your eyes and dream of a garden you'd must love. Then open your eyes and start planting. That is good. That's good. That's good. Good good. I wasn't interested in gardening. Oh, well, I actually told that one earlier. Well, I, hey, listen to this one. I usually plant bulbs in the fall so the gophers can see better during the winter. <laughs> so corny. I think I'm almost out. So I just want to add yes. to that. Um, I have learned since I've been here that oh. if you give it time, you'll grow on me. No, that's right. Bro, on a, hey, did you want to give a cal- uh, shout out to anybody? He said quickly, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Again. I want to give a shout out to all my solo gardeners out there. There you Garden go. Right, right. And thanks to Janice for suggesting you be on the show. Be, no, be I have one cool. more quote. Okay, okay. Here, from here, San right. Francisco Jock here. Oh, this is my own? Yeah, yes, this is okay. yours. Okay. A garden is a passageway between heaven and earth. And I didn't generate that from AI either. A garden is the passageway between heaven and earth. It is true. All right, are we about at that time? Yeah, we're just about. Do you have any more dumb jokes? Did you? I, I think out? I'm out. I think you've been grown on me enough, Doc. Okay, you know. I have one more thing, one more quote. There's what? a garden in every childhood where colors are brighter, the air softer, and more fragrant than it will ever be again. True. Think about the times. The sweetest memories you have are often revolving around a garden. Thanks and, again, Sharon Johnson. Yes, thanks for coming in. Super cool. And we're in the final minute where we say our goodbyes. You have been listening to Doc and Chuck on KCIW LP 100.7 FM in Brookings, Oregon. We hope you have enjoyed the show as much as we yeah, have. Yeah. Our guest Sharon Johnson and Gardens. Yeah, thanks uh, to Tom Bozak and Ray Simon for their engineering wizards. Folks, we have a great show next week. Look forward to it. Peace and love. Goodbye.